Let's do a group specific or within group analysis. Again, forget about regression for a second. Just think about one variable, the outcome variable. I'm going to focus on the notation a little bit. The y value is the outcome variable of interest for person or subject or unit i who is a member of group j. j is my index for group membership. What's the story here? A group specific kind of model? Well, I would say that y follows a normal distribution, but now the mean of that normal distribution is not mu, it's mu sub j. That is, if somebody's a member of group j, their score follows a distribution with a mean that is specific to group j. You can think about this as a group mean rather than a grand mean. Not the mean of everybody, but the mean of people in group J. The variance sigma squared, that's not indexed by J. That indicates that the variance in any particular group is thought to be the variance in any other group. Good old homogeneity of variance. Let's just contrast things slightly. A few moments ago, we said, forget about group membership. Just treat everybody as all at once. We had a model that says the outcome variable is normal with mean mu and variance sigma squared. What would we estimate for any group as the group average? Well, the mean. And I would estimate that for my data based on the overall sample mean of all the scores. OK? Now, if I'm saying, hey, pay attention to group membership. Groups matter, my model is, Scores for every person are distributed normally, but the mean for every person is a group-specific mean, the group to which they belong. In the weight loss study, there are 40 different groups, and the idea is people's scores in one group vary around a mean for that group. In my educational research example, uh, student test scores in a class vary around a class-specific average for that classroom. A different classroom or a different teacher would have a different average. Grouping matters. All right, so for a particular group, what would I estimate for the group mean? Well, now I have a group-specific parameter, mu sub j. Each group is allowed to have their own different mean, and I would estimate that from sample data based on the mean of the scores in the sample in group j. Everyone see the difference in notation? This ignores group membership. There's no subscript for J. This conditions on group membership. Only look at scores from group J. Sometimes I get obsessive about, about notation, but it communicates something to us. OK, so if I want to do a group-specific analysis, my estimated group mean is just going to be the sample mean for each group. I can get that. There they are. There's my 40 groups, the first 20 and then 21 through 40. The group number. And then in the sample data for each group, what's the sample mean, standard deviation, and number of participants in each group? Seems reasonable. These are group-specific means, estimates from the data. We can do this within group or group-specific modeling, even with no predictors, as a regression. So here was our intercept-only regression, ignoring group membership. This is when we said, forget grouping, just lump everybody together all at once. And we had our model, and so we had an estimate for the overall mean or intercept was 15, error variance, and so on. I still want to fit an intercept only model. I got no predictors, but I want the things, I want my scores or my, my, my parameters to vary by group. Let's look at the structure. I got scores for person I who's a member of group J. In a regression equation, formulation is equal to B sub zero is an intercept, now also indexed by J. 
And just like a moment ago, we said we got a, where was it, a particular mean for each group. What we're saying here is we got a particular regression intercept for each group. Okay. So the expected value is just that intercept. I can write it more distributionally like this. Does everyone see this? This J is here, group specific parameter. How am I going to come up with those uh, estimated intercepts in this case? There's an intercept for each group, a B0J for each of the 40 groups. It's just the same estimates from the data. This is going to be the group specific estimate for group one. This is going to be the group specific estimate for group two, and so on. This is like stats 101 where someone says calculate the mean separately for each of the 40 groups. They can do that. We've actually done two things that you can think about as being at the opposite ends of a kind of spectrum. And that's what I want to take a step back and say, what have we done so far? Even though we haven't had any predictors per se, but we've, we've done two different analyses that represent kind of opposite ends of a continuum we can operate on. On the one hand, what we did first was we ignored group membership. Notationally, that meant, okay. Notationally, that meant we had no J's over here. It doesn't matter what group you're in, we're ignoring group in. And we built a model, and we, it's an intercept only model, so there's an intercept, that's the expected value. What are we going to estimate that value to be? That's going to be 15, the overall mean of everybody, or the grand mean. Call that the complete pooling solution. What does complete pooling mean? Well, to pool means to lump together. Complete pooling means lump everyone together in one single analysis, one single group for analysis. Ignore that they come from 40 different groups. Treat everyone as one big old group. Completely pool or lump all the participants together. That says don't pay any attention to what group somebody comes from. Ignore group membership entirely. It's irrelevant. At the other end of the spectrum says no, you must pay attention to groups. And in fact, do things distinctly by group. This is a no pooling situation. Don't lump anybody together. Treat each group distinctly. So in that case, our model is still an intercept only regression model. But now we don't have one overall intercept. We have an intercept for each group indexed by J. Everyone see the J over there? That's why I obsess about notation in my work is it communicates. These B0Js are different from this B0. This is an overall thing applies to everybody. This is a group specific thing applies to people in group J. How would I estimate those 40 in this case B0Js? Those are the group specific means, not the overall grand mean in the data, but the mean of scores in group J or from group J. I'm a picture person. This is how I like to think about it. A little schematic or a little diagram. This is the no pooling setup. This is saying you must pay attention to groups. So I have group one, group two, group three, as many groups up to however many number of groups I have. Group capital J is um, the, the largest number, the highest number of groups. For each group, I have multiple scores, multiple people within each group. So let's just work through the notation. Y11 is the score from person one in group one. Y21 is the score from person two in group one. Y31 would be the score from person three in group one. And so on, up till however many people I have 
in group one. Y12 is the score from the first person in group two. Y22 is the score from the second person in group two, and so on. And for each group, I have a group of scores. Does that make sense, this kind of picture of the schematic here? So here's group one stuff. Here's group two, as many groups as we have. Schematically or conceptually, what I want to say is, if I'm paying attention to group, if I'm not lumping people together, there's a group mean for this group. And in a regression framework, it's that intercept. The intercept only regression, the intercept is the mean. In group two, there's a group specific mean or intercept. In each group, there is a group specific mean or intercept. Again, here's my expressions for them. If I think about this as a single variable, there's a group specific mean for group J plus an error term. In more regression terminology, it's a intercept because I have no other predictors. It's an intercept only regression model. What would my estimates be here? For each of these, I would say, what's the group average here of these scores? That's my estimate for the group specific parameter. So this is the no pooling look within groups. The other end of the spectrum was the complete pooling lump everybody together approach. This says, yeah, I know you got people in group one, people in group two, people in all the groups, but forget about group specifics. Just lump them all together. They're all in one big old group. Okay. The estimate for the group means, what am I going to say? What applies to group one? What applies to group two? What applies to any particular group's mean? Well, I'm saying I don't distinguish between the groups. I'm just going to average them all up. So my estimate here, oh yeah, there's our expression, no longer indexed by J, whether it's the mean or the intercept. This is basically saying, give me the grand mean, lumping everybody together, and that estimate is what I will apply for each of the groups. So I'm saying group membership doesn't matter. Okay. To summarize, we talked about two options. Complete pooling ignores group membership and just says lump everyone together. You work with the grand mean as the estimate for the regression intercept and the intercept only model. A no pooling says no, you must pay attention to the groups and to come up with an estimate for that group's mean, only pay attention to that group's data. Forget the rest of the groups. Use the group specific sample means as estimates. Two options. What should we use? Do you find one more persuasive than the other? Can we use both? Yeah. Should we check if the grand mean is different from the group mean? Should we check if the grand mean is different from the from group means? Well, we know group means will will vary. Even if groups are totally have nothing in there's grouping is random, meaning they have nothing in common. We know sample means would bounce around. So let me just look back at the data set. You're saying like hey, the grand mean is 15, let's see if each of these group means differs from that. Yeah. yeah, we could look at something like that. We know that if we have a group of, what is it, 386 people, and we form a subgroup of 10 of them, the sample mean is going to differ from the overall mean of 15 by some amount. So the fact that they differ doesn't surprise me. We could try to assess, do they seem to differ a lot, and then if we, you're saying like if they do, then we would use the group specific parameters. Yeah, we could do something like that. There are advantages to each of these. This uses all the data. So some of those samples have what, like six, seven, eight, nine people? That's not a lot of data to estimate a group mean. 
This he just says, use everybody's data. That's kind of nice. But it ignores grouping. This says, look at data within that group, but you don't have as much data. You only have maybe a handful of people in that group. So whenever we're presented um, with a choice, it's always good to say, do I have to make a choice? Or as the suggestion was a moment ago, can we somehow use both? And that's precisely what is going to be accomplished by multi-level modeling.